Hello. Welcome to the Hefner Museum of Natural History virtual field trip. Hope you're all having a good day. I'm Julie Robinson, and this is Ashley Kramer, and this is Tad Lichty, and we will be your guides today. So are you ready to learn about animal habitats and adaptations? Great, because we have a puppet play for you. But first, I want to ask you a question. Has there ever been a time when you felt you were treated unfairly? I bet there has been. How did it make you feel? Mad? Sad? I bet it didn't make you feel good. Well, our puppet play, Who Will Eat the Blackberries, is a story about some animal friends who learn about treating each other fairly. So sit back and enjoy. Who will eat the blackberries? Hi, I'm Tidy Turtle. Hi, I'm Sally Skunk. I'm Bernard Beaver. Hi, I'm Roy Rabbit. I'm Ozzy Oriole. We're all friends who live at the edge of a woodland. There's lots of neat things to see around here, like trees, flowers, birds, and bushes. Speaking of bushes, are those blackberries at the top of that bush? I bet they would taste good. I think I'll pick some. Mm. 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 Shucks, I can't jump high enough to reach them. Did I hear someone say blackberries? Blackberries are my favorite. I want some. Get out of my way. Shoot. My arms aren't long enough to reach them. Why would you two be the only ones to eat blackberries? I want some too. Move it. Oh. I guess my long claws are good for digging, but not for climbing. You guys are going about it all the wrong way. You have to bring the blackberries to you. Ouch! My teeth are good for gnawing, but those thorns are, can hurt. Wait a minute. I saw them first, so I should get them. But we all want some. Why don't we have a competition for them? That would be the fair thing to do. Okay, whoever can hold their breath the longest underwater gets the blackberries. <gasps> Hey, that's not fair. Neither Sally or I can swim. Well, I guess you're out. Hey, wait, that's not fair. I have an idea. Whoever can chase everyone away the quickest. No, no, phew. No, stop, no way. I've got it. Whoever can hop the furthest can get the berries. Okay, everybody line up. Not fair, not fair. My legs aren't built for jumping. I'll never get that shell off the ground. Then I guess it's no berries for you. Wait, wait, I've got it. How about who can hide the best? Talk about not fair. You're the only one with a shell. Well, this is getting us nowhere and I'm getting hungry. Did I hear someone say they're hungry? Hey, 
What's going on? Those are our berries. Well, while you guys were busy arguing over who should get the berries, I got hungry. Did you ever think of sharing the berries? That might be the fair thing to do. Sharing? No, I guess we didn't. Yeah, we were busy thinking about what we were good at. We didn't stop to think about anyone else. I guess we need to remember to be fair. Oh, don't be so hard on yourselves. We all need some practice at being fair from time to time. By the way, these berries are delicious. Come closer and I'll toss a few down to you. Thanks. Sure feels good to treat people fairly. Let's remember to do that next time. How did you like the play? Did you think the animals acted fairly? Was Worry Rabbit acting fairly when he thought the berries should go to the animal who could jump the furthest? What about Tiny Turtle? Was she acting fairly when she thought the animal who could hide the best should get the berries? I don't think the animals were very fair at first, but by the end of the play, I think they saw the importance of being fair. Do you agree? Great. Hopefully you and your friends treat each other fairly like our animal friends did. Speaking of our animal friends, did you know that every living thing, plant, or animal has a special home called a habitat? Even you! Habitats provide plants and animals with what they need to live or survive, like food, shelter, water, and space. Each living thing has special features or adaptations that help it to survive, such as wings for flying, strong legs for jumping, special odors to scare away predators, and a hard shell to hide from predators, or even the ability to stay underwater. Let's learn a little bit more about the habitats and adaptations of the animals in our play. Roy Rabbit's scientific name is Civilagus floridanus. He's commonly called the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. He's called this because his tail looks like a ball of cotton. Cottontails can be found in meadows and shrubby areas throughout North America. You may even see one in your own backyard. Eastern cottontails are herbivores. That means they like to eat plants like grasses, clover, even blackberries. Cottontails are crepuscular. Do you know what that means? You're right. Crepuscular means that cottontails are most active at dawn and dusk. Eastern cottontails are somewhat shy and like to hide, but if they have to get away from a predator like an owl or a coyote, they can run very fast, up to 18 miles per hour. Tiny Turtle's scientific name is Terrapene Carolina. They are commonly called box turtles. They live throughout Eastern North America. The puppet I use is not really what a box turtle looks like. This is what a box turtle really looks like. They live throughout Eastern North America. They are omnivores, which means they eat just about anything. Insects, plants, carrion, you name it. A neat thing about box turtles is their hard shell. The top part is called a carapace, and the bottom portion is called the plastron. The top and bottom can close up completely like a box. They can hide from danger inside the shell. Have you ever seen a box turtle on the side of the road and wanted to take it home for a pet? This isn't a good idea. The box turtles are wild animals and wild animals need to be left in their own habitat. Sally Skunk's scientific name is Mephitis Mephitis. They are commonly known as striped skunks. They can be found living across North America in woodlands, forests, grassy plains, and even in cities. 
They are easily identified by the white stripes down their back and tail. Skunks are also omnivores. So what do you think they eat? That's right, they eat insects, fruits, and even eggs sometimes. Skunks have a special gland under their tail that can shoot a very horrible smelling liquid to defend themselves from predators. If you see a skunk, don't get too close or you may smell that odor. Bernard Beaver's scientific name is Castor canadensis. They are commonly known as American beavers. Beavers live in and around ponds throughout most of North America. Like cottontails, beavers are herbivores, but instead of eating grasses, they eat tree bark and cambium, the soft tissue under the bark. Beavers live in family groups and are nocturnal, active at night, diurnal, active during the day, and sometimes crepuscular, like the eastern cottontail rabbits, where they're active at dawn and at dusk. It depends on what job they need to complete at that time. They build houses of trees and branches called lodges at the edge of a pond or stream. Do you know how the beaver cuts down the trees for their lodges? Yes, you're right. Beavers are known for their two sharp front teeth, or incisors. These two teeth act, act like hatchets to cut down tree trunks. The amazing thing about the beaver's teeth is that they never stop growing, so they never wear down. Aussie Oriole's scientific name is Icterus galbula. They are commonly called Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore Orioles are migratory birds. Who knows what migratory means? You're right. They have two different homes. They spend their summers in the eastern United States and their winters as far south as Mexico. Many people think that Orioles are fructivores, meaning that they eat only fruit, particularly deeply colored berries. However, they will also eat caterpillars that can be pests for farmers. You may have seen an Oriole's nest. It looks like a bag hanging up in the high trees. There's a good chance you've heard an Oriole too. Male Orioles have a lovely song and they sing all summer long. We hope you learned some new things about animals today. Their habitats, their adaptations, their diets. Well, let's see if you did. What's the scientific word for home? Habitat, correct. What does a habitat provide? Food, water, shelter, space, right again. Name an adaptation that one of the animals in our play had. If you said sharp teeth, shells, wings, or the ability to stay underwater, you were right again. Way to go. We hope you learned about the importance of being fair. The animals in our play learned that each of them had a special thing that they could do very well, but they also learned that sometimes you have to find things that everybody can do. If you'd like to know more about fairness, read One Potato by Sue Porter. Thanks for visiting the Hefner Museum. We hope you visit us again. The Hefner Museum of Natural History provides a wide variety of discovery trunks for educators to check out free of charge to complement their science curriculum. Each trunk contains authentic specimens, a teacher's guide with background information, and discovery activities aligned to state science standards, children's literature, and natural histories to learn more about the organisms in the activities. Today's play is one of four anti-bias plays found in the Puppets Teaching Tolerance Discovery Trunk. For information on how to check out discovery trunks, Contact Julie Robinson by email robins48 at miamioh.edu or call Hefner Museum of Natural History, area code 513 
529-4618.